So friends, we now know Mark Meadows testified in the grand jury about, and in a very real sense, against Donald Trump. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, there has been a huge development in the investigation into Donald Trump's crimes because we now know that Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, testified before special counsel Jack Smith's grand jury. Let's start with the new reporting. This from the New York Times. Headline, Mark Meadows testified to grand jury in special counsel investigation of Trump. And that article begins, Mark Meadows, the final White House chief of staff under President Donald Trump and a potentially key figure in inquiries related to Mr. Trump, has testified before a federal grand jury hearing evidence in the investigations being led by the special counsel's office, according to two people briefed on the matter. Mr. Meadows is a figure in both of the two distinct lines of inquiry being pursued by the special counsel appointed to oversee the Justice Department's scrutiny of Mr. Trump, Jack Smith. One inquiry is focused on Mr. Trump's efforts to cling to power after losing the 2020 election, culminating in the attack by a pro-Trump mob on the Capitol during congressional certification of the Electoral College results on January 6, 2021. The other is an investigation into Mr. Trump's handling of hundreds of classified documents after he left office and whether he obstructed efforts to retrieve them. It's not clear precisely when Mr. Meadows testified or if investigators questioned him about one or both of the cases. And friends, let me take a brief pause in the New York Times reporting because ABC News has some additional reporting that updates this New York Times story. Sources tell ABC News that Meadows answered questions on both Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election and Trump's alleged mishandling of classified documents. So the ABC News reporting makes clear that Meadows testified about both investigations. Let's go back to the New York Times reporting. For months, people in Mr. Trump's orbit have been puzzled by and wary about the low profile kept by Mr. Meadows in the investigations. As reports surfaced of one witness after another going into the grand jury or to be interviewed by federal investigators, Mr. Meadows has kept largely out of sight, and some of Mr. Trump's advisors believe he could be a significant witness in the inquiries. Mr. Trump himself has, at times, asked aides about how Mr. Meadows is doing, according to a person familiar with the remarks. Now, friends, we've got a lot to unpack here, but let me start with this. When I read this New York Times reporting, the first thing that came to mind is some reporting from nearly a year ago now. This from Rolling Stone. Headline, Trump's lawyers think Mark Meadows is going down. And that article reads in part, Trump's inner circle increasingly views Meadows as a likely fall guy for the former president's attempts to overturn the 2020 election. Members of Trump's legal team are actively planning certain strategies around Meadows' downfall, including possible criminal charges. Trump has himself begun the process of distancing himself from some of his one-time senior aides' alleged actions around January 6th. So nearly a year ago, Trump and his lawyers were looking to make Mark Meadows the fall guy, looking to have Meadows take the fall for Donald Trump and the crimes he, Trump, had committed. And all of a sudden, Mark Meadows makes himself scarce, goes off grid. 
So much so that even Donald Trump starts asking those around him, um, how's, uh, how's Mark? Uh, haven't heard from him in a while. Well, that's not a surprise, sport, because you and your lawyers were trying to put the beef on him, put the blame on him, make him the fall guy for your crimes. And now we know Mark Meadows went into the grand jury and testified about both criminal investigations of Donald Trump, the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the insurrection, and Trump's classified documents, crimes. And friends, that is undoubtedly a great development. Why? Because Mark Meadows sat at the knee of the mob boss, Donald Trump. He can testify about where the bodies are buried. He has first-hand information and can give a first-hand account of the crimes committed by Donald Trump. But there is still one enormously consequential question that we don't have the answer to yet. In what capacity did Mark Meadows testify? Did he testify as a cooperating witness or did he testify as an immunized witness? And those are two very different kinds of witnesses. So for this discussion, you might want to sit back, get comfortable. We're going to have to go to a, a Team Justice Law School class for just a few minutes because I want to talk about the dramatic difference between cooperating witnesses and immunized witnesses. And I dealt with many of both kinds of witnesses in my 30 years as a federal prosecutor. So first of all, Mark Meadows has a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Why? Well, because we've seen so much reporting about how, for example, he was basically act acting as, you know, the switchboard for treason central. Mark Meadows, how can I direct your treasonous call or text? Oh, Ginny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, you're saying that we need to have Donald Trump overthrow our democracy, change the results of the election so he can remain president, notwithstanding the vote of the American people. Gotcha. Let me pass on your message. We know he took tons of messages like that. We know he helped, he aided, he assisted, he facilitated Donald Trump in his crimes. We know based on the January 6th select committee hearings that he told his aide, Cassidy Hutchinson, look, Donald Trump knows his angry mob is attacking the Capitol and hunting for elected officials and threatening to hang Mike Pence. He doesn't think they're wrong because Mike Pence didn't corruptly throw him the election, so I'm not going to try to stop any of it. I mean, those are just a couple of examples of the potential criminal exposure of Mark Meadows. Remember when he would meet with, I believe it was Representative Scott, pardon me, Perry, and after the meeting, or after the meetings, what would Meadows do? He would burn documents in his fireplace, inferentially destroying evidence of criminality, on and on and on. So I think we can comfortably conclude, based on everything that's been reported, Mark Meadows has a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. What does that mean? when you have a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. It means if you're subpoenaed to the grand jury, you can decline to answer questions. You can lawfully and constitutionally invoke that important right under the Fifth Amendment not to testify if your truthful testi testimony would tend to incriminate you. So Mark Meadows has a very good lawyer. And undoubtedly, when Meadows was presented to the grand jury by Jack Smith and his prosecutors, he would have pled the fifth, invoked this Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. That gave um, special counsel Jack Smith a choice. What do I do to try to extract the testimony from Mark Meadows that I want to extract because it will help me prove the crimes of Donald Trump? Well, he had a couple of ways he could go with Meadows. One he could charge Meadows with the crimes he committed. He could negotiate with Meadows' um, criminal defense team 
and have Meadows plead guilty, agree to cooperate fully and truthfully against everyone about whom he had incriminating information, and Meadows would have to agree to testify before both the grand jury and the trial jury. So he could have struck a plea agreement with cooperation, which would have morphed Mark Meadows into a cooperating witness. That is the preferred way to deal with people who commit crime, but you want or you need them to testify about the crimes of others to help you know, build your way up the criminal ladder and get the mob boss, the biggest criminal fish, Donald Trump. There's another way that Jack Smith could have gone with Mark Meadows. If you want to extract the testimony from Meadows, but he pleads the fifth, you can extinguish his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. You can overcome it by granting him immunity, by immunizing him and telling him nothing you say can be used against you because I am immunizing you against prosecution. You, you will not be prosecuted for your crimes, so now you must answer the questions before the grand jury that would incriminate yourself, technically, and Donald Trump. That is not the favored approach, and here's why I say that, friends. Because if you are giving a guy like Mark Meadows a pass, a former chief of staff, among the highest government officials in our federal government, you give him a pass for his crimes, how credible will his testimony be about the crimes of Donald Trump? Here is how a defense attorney would cross-examine Mark Meadows if he testified under a grant of immunity, if he was given a pass for all of the crimes he committed. No accountability for those crimes. Defense attorney would ask Meadows, among other things, let's see, you committed obstruction of justice, you were involved in a conspiracy, you basically committed any number of crimes designed to end our democracy and install Donald Trump into the presidency for a second term unlawfully and unconstitutionally. And had you been convicted of those crimes, you would have died in prison decades and decades of potential jail time if you had been convicted. But that prosecutor sitting right there gave you a pass. That man is your best friend. He is your savior. He's your patron saint. He gave you a deal that meant you would never have to serve one minute of accountability, one minute of jail time for the crimes you committed, correct? And now you want the jury to believe anything out of your mouth that you say about the crimes of Donald Trump? You would say anything you have to say to please that prosecutor who is your patron saint, who kept you out of prison, who gave you a pass for all of your egregious crimes. That would be for openers. That would go on for hours and probably days on cross-examination of Mark Meadows if he was given immunity, if he was given a pass for his crimes. That is the disfavored approach of extracting information and evidence and testimony out of somebody who committed crimes. So the question becomes, which way did Jack Smith go to secure the testimony of Mark Meadows? Because as I say, Mark Meadows has to be either a cooperating witness or an immunized witness because those are the two ways you can overcome his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. I'm quite sure Mark Meadows didn't just waltz into the grand jury footloose and fancy free without an immunity deal and without being a cooperating witness and say, yes, let me just tell you everything I know truthfully, honestly, accurately, and fully about my crimes and the crimes of Donald Trump. Doesn't work that way, friends. That's why we have defense attorneys and it's a good thing the Sixth Amendment provides everybody with a right to effective counsel. That's the way it should be. So Jack Smith had to do something to overcome Mark Meadows' Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Here's the thing. Jack Smith, who was first the head of the public integrity section 
at the Department of Justice and who, whose team tried really challenging politically charged cases and they won some and they lost some. Give me a prosecutor who's not afraid to lose but is willing to take the difficult public corruption cases to trial, win, lose, or draw because it's more important to try those cases than to win those cases, to serve as a deterrent to other corrupt politicians who might be contemplating committing crimes. Give me a prosecutor like that, fearless, a real without fear or favor guy who's even willing to lose a case every now and then. That's the kind of person I want to jump into the prosecutorial foxhole with and fight the enemy, the enemy being the political criminals, the ruling class criminals, the corrupt politicians. And then he went to The Hague thereafter to prosecute war crimes and war criminals. He didn't go to private practice to, you know, line his pockets. He went to The Hague. Those are some pretty good credentials and, and, a, and a demonstrable dedication to public service and the rule of law and to holding the ruling class criminals accountable. So if I had to bet one dollar, which is my betting limit, I'm not a high roller, if I had to bet a buck, I would bet that the way Jack Smith went was he negotiated a guilty plea under seal, so we don't know about it yet. It's appropriate to do that, keep it under seal until a later date after all the indictments have been returned against Trump and company. He may have pleaded guilty under seal, Mark Meadows, agreed to cooperate fully and truthfully against others, and in that capacity, he testified before the grand jury. And that's how you keep Mark Meadows' credibility high, so his testimony will be believable to a jury. There are other ways to make testimony believable. You have to corroborate it with all sorts of other evidence and information like text messages and emails and audio recordings and the testimony of others, right? The more corroboration you have of a witness, the more likely the jury is going to be to believe that witness. But again, I have to believe Jack Smith was not willing to give a criminal chief of staff to the President of the United States a pass, give him immunity so that he could secure his testimony. Remember Bob Halderman, uh, Richard Nixon's chief of staff who, who committed crimes covering up the Watergate scandal? What happened to him? He went to trial. He was convicted of perjury and conspiracy and obstruction of justice and he went to prison. You know, rather than give Mark Meadows immunity, I would have far preferred that Jack Smith, if he wasn't going to give him a plea deal with cooperation, just take him to trial. Get him convicted. Do what the prosecutors did to Bob Haldeman, the last criminal chief of staff to a president of the United States. He was held accountable. He didn't get an immunity deal. But I have a feeling Jack Smith made the right call. I presume he made the right call. I wouldn't presume he made the wrong call. And I think we will know within the coming months precisely what status Mark Meadows was in when he appeared before the grand jury and testified about the crimes of Donald Trump. Because friends, we're getting there. It's coming. We're going to see indictments probably sooner rather than later, probably first for the classified documents crimes and then for the insurrection. We're getting there. Because justice matters. Friends, thank you for bearing with me through that long uh, Team Justice Law School class. Um, I'm sure there will be many more long Team Justice Law School classes in our future as we move into this next phase, this important era in our history, in the life of our nation, which I am calling the Trump trials, because that is what we will be discussing probably for the next two to three years, the Trump trials. And I, for one, will be here for all of it. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.